You know you've made it when you play Madison Square Garden. And on this day, some of the best gamers in the world are facing off in front of thousands of amped up fans. I play the game myself. It's, it's just like watching anything else. You know, it's like watching football on TV, it's hockey, what, you know, anything. This isn't football or hockey, but with an estimated 70 million viewers worldwide and a total of $35 million in prize money, eSports has made it to the big leagues. Barely able to get the kill before, and now they're going to get a double in return. The game here is Dota 2, Defenders of the Ancients. Two teams with five players each connected online control their own heroes. An estimated 10 million people around the world play Dota 2 for fun, but the world's best get paid like the superstars they've become. This year, the top five have won more than a million dollars each. And far away from the glitz of Manhattan, the path to video game greatness begins in places like this. Vancouver's Curtis Ling, just 22 years old, may be on the verge of breaking into those elite ranks, honing his skills in the home he grew up in. There's a sort of a stereotype where you have the unemployed male playing video games all day in his parents' basement. But oh, that's, you've heard that's that one, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People sort of point that out to me a lot when I <laughs> tell them what I do. But like, that's, that's actually me. That's <laughs> who I am, except I'm employed in it and I get paid to do what I do. And paid pretty well. Understandably, he doesn't want to say exactly how much, but he tells me his esports income this year is in the, quote, low six figures. To achieve that kind of success, he and his teammates, who are spread out over two continents, play against other top teams six hours a day, seven days a week. He practices on his own as well and studies his rival strategies. You pretty much live the game the entire day. It sounds exhausting. It's exhausting, but for us, this is our dream jobs, right? So it's easy to get past everything when you're just working towards what you've always dreamed of. When I was young, I never really wanted to become a policeman or fireman. I, I just wanted to play games all day. And I mean, it's probably worrisome for my parents, but that's really what I wanted. And somehow I've been granted that wish. Ling couldn't have picked a better time to be living his dream. Esport is surging in popularity. A look around Madison Square Garden tells the story. James Lamkin manages ESL. That's one of the leagues in the growing worldwide circuit. So 10 years ago, if you were in a venue, you would see a dozen, two dozen people with a couple hundred dollars in prize money. Five years ago, maybe a couple hundred people with $10,000 prize money. Now you're seeing events with hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars in prize money with tens of thousands of people at venues and tens of millions online. So we got one Roshan pin. If all this seems strange to you, don't worry. You're probably not part of that male 18 to 35 demographic that advertisers covet. Traditional advertisers are suddenly really interested in what we're doing rather than, say, just people in the tech space. Pizza Hut is a sponsor of this event. T-Mobile is a sponsor of this event. Um, and very quickly, we're seeing a lot of real mainstream brands getting involved. A few weeks ago, Curtis Ling and his team, Cloud9, placed second at the DreamHack Festival in Sweden. For two weeks, thousands of fans crammed into the venue where they played, danced, even slept while the world's best competed. Let's hear it for Cloud9. To this crowd, the members of Cloud9 are rock stars, and their travels this year alone sound like the ultimate rock tour. We went to Austin, Texas, Romania, Sweden a couple times. We went to Frankfurt. Uh, we went to China, I think, three times in total. We went to Seattle. We went to New York. I th think that's all. When he's not traveling the world, the world comes to his basement. Say circle at three branch. Oh, that's in our budget. This is a website called Twitch TV. When gamers like Ling go online, fans can log on and watch him play and ask him in real time what he's doing. In his case, as many as 7,000 fans at a time. It would actually amaze you, the people that watch you, when you sort of pull up analytics for your channel, you have someone from like Korea and Africa and of course like North America, Russia, like anywhere around the world, people are just watching. It's, it's sort of become a replacement for TV for a lot of people. It's sort of a cool new medium though, because it's TV, 
but in real time and you can interact with the television show. Um, so this is the trophy from the first turn we won. In Ling's home, there are just a few signs of his eSports success. And outside, well... Rather infrequently, I do get people who recognize me. On the street? On the street. It's sort of neat. Um, what do they say? Like, well, they call me by my in-game name, which is AUI2000 or AUI2000. It's like, hey, AUI! <laughs> and I'm like, hey, dude. <laughs> and really, it's, it's sort of weird for me just because I'm not used to it. And usually I have a friend with me and my friend will laugh at me because they think it's so funny, right? They've known me since high school or elementary school. I'm just a normal guy, just usually studying, playing games, going to school. And now I have some random person talking to me. Fame, fortune, how long can it last? Ling figures he has three, maybe four years at the top of his game. I think a lot of people attribute the short lifespan of a professional player to sort of your reflexes dull or something like that, some brain thing. But I think it's just you lose motivation. You actually have to work incredibly hard if you want to be at the very top. And sometimes putting that in year after year, it just gets tiring. You have a breakdown, I guess. For now, motivation is not a problem. This is the Stanley Cup of Dota, the International, in Seattle. Earlier this year, Ling's Cloud9 team won $650,000 here and was three wins away from the top prize of $5 million. You heard that right, $5 million. The 2015 prize promises to be even bigger. Not bad for something you train for in your parents' basement. Ian Hanamancing, CBC News, Vancouver.